I was about to make a full independent review of just the True Engine 3 SE, but then I thought, why not make a comparison to my top recommendation this year, the Soundbeat 2 Shift 2. I'm gonna tell you all the difference so you know which one is the best Soundbeats right now, and I'm not gonna waste any of your time. The 3 SE has better chip, smaller case, better looking earbuds, and of course, it offers improvement in the sound quality, but I found that it might not matter in some genres. Unfortunately, it's not an all-win scenario. It is a downgrade from IP IPX7 to IPX5, but that's pretty much it. So if you want to know more, let's talk about it right now. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here, and today we're reviewing the Soundpeats through Engine 3 SE. I know I'm quite late to the party, but I think I have some important things that I've discovered on my couple weeks using this earbuds, so I think your time spent here will be worthwhile. Now, as a disclaimer, I bought this 3SE out of my own pocket. No one is sponsoring this video and I am not paid by anyone. So if you want to support what I'm doing, please use the affiliate links down in the description below just to direct you to Lazada, Shopee, Amazon, and then you can buy anything you need. That way I can get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Thank you so much for your support. Now I'll start talking about the most important part, the sound quality. As I've said in the intro, this is an improvement over the True Shift 2, but it depends largely on what musical genre you listen to. If you listen to rock or any complicated songs with lots of instruments, well, you're in luck. The True Engine 3 SE will be an upgrade and at this moment, I kind of regard it as one of the best balanced sounding earbuds for 50 bucks. Let's start talking about some example songs right now so you know what exactly is different. First, I'm gonna go with Hole in a Heart by Yoroshika. If you're new to the channel, don't get discouraged by the J-Rock song. Yoroshika just happens to be one of my favorite artists at the moment and their songs are usually just very challenging and it's good to compare earbuds with. And right off the bat, I noticed the 3SE has bigger soundstage. It has noticeably better separation, and especially when the bass kicks in. The True Shift 2 may cover the vocal a little bit while the 3SE is just very well separated, very open, and I confirmed that with the other song, Thought Crime. When I switched to the 3SE, I noticed that everything just got more room to breathe. When True Shift 2 plays everything kind of like in the center of my head, the 3SE puts the vocal in the center, drums to the side, and guitars at kind of the back there. And talking about volume quickly, it is not different at all between the two. If you notice on the screenshots here, I listened to around 70 percent on both of these earbuds which can be used as an outdoor listening volume. Now moving on to Enter Sandman by Metallica. The main difference here is the same. The continuous bass and guitar chug in the background is covering the vocals a tiny tiny bit in the True Shift 2 while the 3SE separates them better without losing any of the power of the mid bass range there. If anything it reproduces better vocal detail. In pop songs, hip hop, rap, EDM, the soundstage and separation improvement on the 3SE is nice, but it doesn't make that much of a difference to recommend as an upgrade from the True Shift 2. I did test the bass with The Weeknd by SDA and found that the 3SE pumps just as much bass, maybe a little bit clearer vocal and a tiny bit more powerful bass rumble, but overall the True Shift 2 is still plenty enough for these kind of songs. In any case, testing the 3SE made me realize one thing. Soundpeats really know how to make good earbuds and they standardize that across all their lineup. The sound, the controls, the design language, we're gonna talk about that later. I haven't tested all their earbuds, but strictly talking about these two, my goodness, how they feel like brothers from the same lineup. Only because the 3SE uses dual driver, it comes out superior. Now that's pretty much it about the sound quality. Let's move on to the next aspect the build quality and fit. Now, starting with the build quality of the case. 
It really feels like a mini True Shift 2 case, but note that this still takes up just as much height. It will most likely still make a bump inside your pants pocket. And there's a reason for that because it needs to accommodate the earbuds, which is not thin. And on top of that, it's nice that you can throw any foam tips and it will fit in the case, which they promote actually because they give you one free comply tips in a box, but those are not tall enough. I have to test it with my super tall KZ foam tips here, which no other case can take in, but just fits fine here. Although it's still so tall that the lid cannot close fully, but the magnets still hold it together. So it's okay. Now, after all the good things I've said, actually I'm gonna pump the high brakes a little bit here because this exact case is the Achilles heel. Especially when you compare it to any other earbuds going for 50 bucks, let's say the Mpow T5 or even cheaper ones like the U Green High Tune, they are objectively better. I think the hinge triggers me the most here because it's plain plastic, it closes very, very easily. Check it out. And then without the earbuds, the case feels like a hollow piece of plastic. The best way I could describe this case is just, it's functional. It's got all the basics covered inside a case, like a four LED case battery indicator, USB-C for charging, a little light beside it to let you know it's charging. It also has 500 milliamp hour battery inside, which for me is enough to last a little bit more than a week. And also the outside is all soft matte textured here. So far it's been pretty scratch resistant. No major scratches I can see here. That's great. Let's talk about the earbuds for now. It has 55 milliamp hour battery inside. Not a big battery considering how big the size is actually. Most of it are taken by the drivers. But because it uses QCC 3020 chip, it can play just as Soundpeats claim, around six hours of music at 50%, which should be enough for most people. Now, we cannot talk about the earbuds without taking a look at the design here. First, the black plastic here is a soft matte texture just like the case, and it's got a gold bronzy accent on the touchpad slash logo here, which I think looks awesome. And you don't look at it often, but the insides are also gold. And wait for it, the grill inside, this is metal and it is gold. Goodness gracious, I love the exquisite look they're aiming for here. And it fits just as well too. The sculpted IEM design here helps a ton in keeping a secure fit. One thing to keep in mind is this fits pretty deep into the ear. So if you don't like those, better stay away. Otherwise, I never had a problem with the fit no matter what I'm doing. And I was using this most of the time with the included ear tips. And if you love IEM designs, I think you will love this one. All right, now moving on to the next one, I'm going to talk about the experience. And because there is no extra features to discuss here, no ANC, no ambient mode, I will talk about the controls and then some of my problems with the 3 SE. About the controls, as you can see right here, they are simply complete. This may come as a no surprise to you because this is the case with the True Shift 2 as well. Only that now the touch sensor area is only in this metal part. So you know exactly if you tap in the right area, but still my problem is the same with True Shift 2. The sensitivity and the responsiveness is not really that great. Like sometimes a double tap and nothing happened or if I tap correctly, I need to wait a little bit. But the problem is not that annoying and the missed taps is only once in a while. So I'm perfectly fine with it. Now to my next problem, just like the True Shift 2, the LED shines white all the time when there's no media playing. I didn't think of it as an issue on the True Shift 2 because the LED is just not that bright, but here the LED is so bright. In a completely dark bedroom at midnight when I want to pause a song for a moment or I stop playing a game or something, no audio is playing and the LED lights will turn up, lits the whole room. And I'm just so afraid that my brother who's sleeping right beside me will get annoyed by this one. It is really just like what Picky Audio said in his True Shift 2 review. These are legit little LED torches when nothing is playing. Maybe you can use it to find your keys or something. Like, <laughs> finally, this is my biggest problem with the earbud. I'm lucky because I did 
recreated right now the two on pairs very often only the left side which is the main master earbud connects to my phone and the right side is looking for the left side as you can see it blinks here while here no media is playing but it's connected to the phone so it shines constant white light now i'm still unsure what's the exact reason behind this behavior but i think the reason is because i take both earbuds at the same time and then the left starts up but the right didn't start up and the left already Already paired to my phone but the right didn't have time to pair to the left side okay that was very confusing but I think the trick is to take the right side first let it boot up and search for the left side and then you take the left side out and you know the two can pair together then it can pair to the phone so it's just really annoying sometimes when I take these out to listen to a quick one or two songs and then I found out that only one plays the music fortunately this is an easy fix all you have to do is just put the earbuds both inside the case and then keep holding for 10 seconds that way they will blink white and red and after that they will pair together and you know you can reconnect to your phone but again you have to delete your old pairing and then you have to look for a new pairing it's just kind of annoying and it feels really like a downgrade compared to the solid dual mode system that we have on the true shift 2 so yeah let me know if you do have that kind of problem in the 3se or is it just me but as the plus point if your phone do support aptx tws you will have better latency better connectivity check this video out if you want to know more about aptx tws AWS. Okay, so that is all about the problems actually. Now let's check out how it performs in the latency test and the call test. side okay i think both are connected right now and we are on the sound beats 2 engine 3 su what do you think of the sound quality i think this uses the cvc 8.02 mic version if you don't know what that means check out my video about qcc 3040 chips and this basically uses two mics in each earbud one on the bottom here facing to your mouth and one on the top here facing outwards to listen and cancel your outside environments. Okay, let's see how that performs outside. Okay, so Southeast 2 Engine 3 SE outdoor call test. A little bit wind blowing right here, so I'm not sure if you hear that. Uh, we have some cars and some motorcycles passing by behind me, so see if you can hear any of those. See if I'm talking about clearly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. Windows. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's go back upstairs and we will finish the video. Okay, in summary, the Soundpeats 2 Engine 3 SE is a nice sounding, well-rounded earbuds for 50 bucks. It has some potentially deal-breaking problems in the pairing here, but because it uses the same QCC 3020 chip, maybe this is just a defect on my unit. Nevertheless, I've got my reasons why this doesn't take over the crown as my best earbud of the year. Compared to the TrueShift 2, the IPX5 here is a downgrade. The seamless dual mode switching is gone. I mean, to be fair, you do have aptx TWS, and also the case here. I mean, come on, Soundpeats, I think you could do better, especially with the hinge here. So I think we could all agree that for 15 bucks less, the True Shift 2 still offers way better value. But that's not saying the 3 SE is bad. It nails all the basics. It sounds better for rock songs. It has great IEM design sprinkled with awesome gold accent here. And if you are into foam tips, it's got a case that can fit that. And most importantly, if you absolutely hate 
carrying something this big, the True Engine 3 SE is a great option that I can recommend, especially if you can find it around 35 bucks like I do in Indonesia here. It is one heck of a deal. Okay, so that is it for the video this time around. What do you think about the 3 SE? Are you planning on getting it or you have it already? Let me know, especially if you do have pairing problem. Fortunately, again, it's easy to reset it. Just hold the touch sensor for 10 seconds. But let's talk all about it down in the comments below or in Instagram and Twitter as well. Unfortunately, I won't be able to reply as quickly because I'm very busy right now planning what I want to do next year. But otherwise, time to wait for my Soundpeats H1 to see if it's gonna be the ultimate Soundpeats or I think I should order the Feel T1 Pro instead. Hmm. Anyway, don't forget to use the affiliate links to help me support the channel and thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenneth, I will see you in the next one. Bye. So this cake. <laughs> okay, mantap. <laughs>